Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, going to tour the garden, I'm going to talk about trellising crops you can plant in April. Today's April 6th and take a look at just different parts of my garden. We've been having a lot of rain. Last several nights, been in the low 30s. This is my unheated greenhouse. Just want to show you a couple of things here. First of all, a lot of crops can still you know, be growing nicely outside in colder weather. Those are your cool weather crops. That's what we're going to be talking about. Strawberry plants have been doing really well in here that I potted up back in, I don't know, probably November. A lot of people have been asking me, can I put my strawberry plants out now? There might be a chance of frost. Strawberry plants are extremely hardy. These froze solid over January and February. The plants are doing really well. That sweet William in there that stayed out the entire year. Blazing Star or Liatris, which is a beautiful long purple flower that spikes up. Now these are all planted in three, I think, three inch containers. Planted these about four weeks ago. You can get like 60 or 80 bulbs of the Blazing Star. Bees love them, great for pollinators. You just drop one per container and they're all coming up. Now it's only like maybe 15 bucks for all those. If you went and just tried to buy one plant in a gallon pot, it's going to cost you like eight or twelve dollars. I'm going to be able to populate a lot of my property with the liatris, which are perennials. So these are going to come back year after year. You can go do this right now in many areas. And if you find bulbs on sale, you can still plant them later. You know, if you don't get them till May when they're on sale, just get them growing and then get them out into your garden. Different, you know, canes, raspberries, goji berry, things that I've already showed you. Inside the greenhouse, well, the uh, music garlic is coming up. I have garlic planted all over my garden. Daffodils look great. Let's just step over real quick. Now this is unheated. They're surviving just fine in there. I can see they need a little bit of watering. One of the plants down there needs some water. Those are globe artichokes. They've gotten their like 40 hours of cold temperature. They need temperatures between 32 and 45 degrees so that they bloom and create the flowers and the artichokes. So they're going to be going into the ground. But everything looks really good. I mean, I've kind of maximized the space and really like having a greenhouse. These are my lettuces that I've been putting out. All kinds of herbs. These are all going to get potted up. Like right over here, this is just a flat of bib lettuce that I sprouted in the house. You know, just had it in the house, you know, five days, six days, seven days. And then I brought it out here and it's just been sitting out here. I can give you the date probably since 3-7. So I seeded it in the house March 1st. I'm sorry, I actually seeded it in the house on March 7th. About six days later I brought it out here. So this isn't even four weeks of growth. But look how beautiful it is. And that's going to save me a lot of money um, if you were going to go buy your own transplants. I mean it's just a ton of bib lettuce. And I like the bib lettuce because it's a little more tolerant to the heat so I can grow it longer into the season here. It's a little bit windy today so I apologize for the uh, change in the microphone. Kale back there, these were all direct seeded into these trays on 3-8. More lettuces direct seeded into the trays and I had these in the greenhouse they germinated. Now I have them out here getting the sun and the cold collards, cilantro, and then that's purple uh, kale back there. A lot of people don't know that dill, which is in the back, can take a cold, can take a frost, and so can cilantro. So these are all, you know, just sitting here growing slowly and they'll go into my garden. Not all that, of course. Some of this is going to be sold and given away. So let's spin around to the main area and see what's going on in there. And I want to talk about the trellising too. I do trellising videos, you know, all the time. And we're going to be, well, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos this year on trellising when the plants are actually going up the trellises so that you can see more how you might use them. So first thing we have when we come in, cold frames. This cold frame is not sunken which means I just have stuff growing in there. So a lot of that grew over the winter. I'm going to clear all that out. The radishes look good. They're ready to come out. But I wanted to show you 
what we have going on in here. This is the sunken cold frame. Just did a video on it. I will put it in the video description of this video. These are all my peppers and a tomato plant that I started the peppers back in December and they've been surviving very nicely even when the nights get to a frost, when there's frost on the ground because it stays warm in here because it's 12 inches deep and the earth helps regulate it. But these plants are going to be really large in the next three, four weeks. They'll go into the ground in about that time and I'm going to have banana peppers, bell peppers, and I forgot what other ones I have. Uh, jalapenos in there. Earlier to the table because I'm just using this technique. Endive, kale, it's starting to come alive. They were put in in the beginning of March and just kind of sat there. But as the temperature warmed, as the soil warmed, these are starting to take off. Like in the next three weeks, they're going to be beautiful. These are <laughs> my overwintered hot peppers. Fail on that experiment. They're going to be put back somewhere else. Strawberries look great. Again, remember, they can take that frost. They can take that freeze. Different radishes I have in here that went in on February 26th. So it's been about, what is that, six weeks? They are just starting to take off in size with the leaves, but they've been growing very nicely in here. And you can see the little radish is starting to form. That's what you want. I'll be doing a video on this on my other channel. You don't want a lot of leaf growth. So, and sometimes people disagree with me, there's not really a whole lot of reason to add nitrogen or any fertilizer to radishes. Sometimes the addition of the nitrogen can get you more leaf growth, but more importantly, it's getting them in in the right temperature, let them grow slow and steady. Even though some radishes are ready in anywhere from 25 to 40 days, just because you put them in the ground, just because I put them in the ground on February 26, doesn't mean in 30 days these are gonna be ready. The temperatures have to warm to their liking so that they start growing and take off. But while they're sitting there growing slowly, they're starting these beautiful little radish bulbs. And when the right temperatures come, these are gonna grow. We're gonna have beautiful radishes. All right, let's spin around this way. Blueberry bushes, all that I've done videos on, on taking care of them, fertilizing them. They all look good. I mean, things are going nicely. I'm going to go down to the other side. So as I'm giving the tour, you're not getting my shadow in every shot. Before we go over to the other side, radishes are growing in here, maybe four to six inches deep. Flower boxes that I built. They went in on March 2nd, you know, about a week after the ones you just saw. They're doing really well. Peppermint. These are my herbs that have been sitting out here really for the whole, well, since last year. Garlic chives, the mints, different flowers, all doing really well, ready to be transplanted. Those are chives that I divided up, again, probably around November. Everything is doing what it's supposed to do. Don't be afraid to put the cool weather crops out, your perennial crops, your herbs, your plants that can take a frost. They really love this temperature and they really do thrive. All right, coming back around this way, this is some of my uh, flower boxes that I'm making more and more edible. So those are the day lilies coming back extremely nicely. I've also tucked in some onions that are coming up right along there. That's a hibiscus, which I can make teas with. More day lilies, black carrot, the rhubarb is looking pretty good. It's a grapevine, dwarf apple. The rhubarb on the right is a first year plant. I bought that about four weeks ago, put it in. Looks pretty good. That's the second year plant. Just massive amounts of rhubarb coming out of there. So this will be the first year that I actually harvest it and do something with the stalks. The leaves again are poisonous for those of you that don't know that. Onions on the left, garlic doing well, carrots doing well, more garlic. Everything is starting to really take off, get that brilliant green. We had tons of rain, part of what makes us the rusted garden. My no dig area, just did a video, which I also put in the video description, but you can find it pretty easily because I think, I mean, we maybe did it a week ago or something like that. Chicken wire. 
protecting the brassicas along there, protecting the lettuce back there, protecting different brassicas in there too. That's a different design which I didn't show in the other video. But I just wrapped chicken wire around four bamboo posts, put some on top, that will keep the deer out, keep the rabbits out. Globe artichokes in their second year survived here in Maryland. What I wanted to show you real quick is right here is the brassica that I put in the same time that I put in everything else you see here that same day. One night goes by, rabbit came, chewed it down. So this setup really does work. And the question I kept getting, wasn't a rabbit going to crawl under there? No, rabbits are really skittish. They don't know what this is. They don't want to feel it on them. They don't want to crawl into it. Squirrels, they can be more destructive. Raccoons, a little more dest destructive. But this will keep deer away. This will keep rabbit away, rabbits away, because deer don't want to mess with this either. Let's roll into the main area. Onions from previous videos are popping up nicely. And part of what I like about the Garden Ramblings is that you get to see how the plantings of, or plantings I did in previous videos are doing. And they're doing well. The onions are up. We'll see how that goes. My container area, I sell all these at my seed shop. If you're interested, check out the video description. Garlic, second year collards, that's starting to flower. Just about anything that survives the winter and goes into the second year, it's going to want to flower. That's just what they do. You can eat these. They're absolutely delicious. Radishes from bunch, radish bunches that I put in there. Looking good. Nice and firm. They were kind of floppy when I first put them in, but after three days of rain, everything is really coming to life. So you can see in there how much rain Maryland gets sometimes in two or three days. Lots of rain. These are going to be going into, I think, these towers. We'll see what's going on. Radishes that I put in on March 4th. So you have plenty of time in April to direct seed peas right now. I might have said radishes. Peas that went in on 3-4. You have plenty of time to direct sow your peas right now. You can press in garlic right now. You can press in um, soft neck garlic. I'll show you some examples of that. Bunching onions, lettuce. Back there is some mustard greens surrounding a red Russian kale. Those can all be direct seeded. Mustard greens are great direct seeded in April. Sometimes kale, maybe you want some transplants, but you can direct seed kale. More peas doing really well. Let me just show you the spring pressed garlic. Some garlic, like the bigger garlic that you've seen, like right here, this was planted last November. The garlic right here was all pressed in about three weeks ago. You can see one just popping up. It's just plain old soft neck garlic from the grocery store. It may not get to be huge, beautiful bulbs, but you're going to get something and you can use it. So, and I would experiment too. The key with the spring garlic is you just want it to get a good four weeks, six weeks of a cold period. See how it goes. You know, maybe you don't have enough time for the cold that you may want. But go ahead, press it and see what happens. You can always eat the green. Another combination of kale and mustard greens. I'm just seeing with this experiment if the mustard greens repel that white butterfly that come and lay the green worms all over your brassicas. More collards. Again, remember I was telling you they want to bloom. You can eat all these. Just saute them up. Put them in stir fries. We'll come over here in a second. I want to come back over to this side. As for trellising, this is um, masonry mesh. I find it in Home Depot outside in their outdoor department. Buy the rebar, buy concrete mesh back there. I use this for all kinds of different trellising. I can put an ag fabric. Um, canopy over this will keep out insects if you want to do something that's not treating your plants chemically in any way you can put an ag fabric dome over this grow your kales or your other plants right in there in this side or on this side 
That is the concrete mesh I've talked about before. You just buy a sheet at Home Depot or Lowe's and that's going to trellis peas. I have more peas planted in there. Your standard bamboo posts, that's perfect for growing peas. These stronger cages, they double right now for growing peas and then they're going to support my um, tomato plants. This space is in transition. I'm not sure what I'm going to be growing here. But again, trellising wise, a couple of U-posts, basic fencing you can find anywhere. You just cut it to size. The U-posts, you usually want them to be six feet, eight feet, so you get a nice support on them. And then you can go about two feet above here. That is the concrete mesh, just inverted or put on its side, again with some U-posts. That's a little bit thicker and sturdier than your standard fencing that you buy in a roll, so I can go a little bit higher. As I went higher, I wanted to support it, so I just weaved a bamboo post through there, and it's nice and solid. I grow my butternut squash up that. This is, uh, I think, half-inch PVC pipe and just basic chicken wire weaved up it, and this is not where it's supposed to be, but I just put a piece of rebar in the ground, set this on top of it. It waves and moves in the wind, which is kind of cool, and then I can grow beans up it you know a lighter crop you could probably do cucumbers up this too but because it's not fully supported it is going to bend and flip a little bit but I like the motion this is the space where I'm growing a lot of my beets and root crops these all overwintered a lot of these will be coming out the beets are just starting to come up they're hard to see in there planted some celery different crops that overwintered so we have lettuce you can plant in April. Carrots, you can plant in April. Spinach, you can plant in April. Turnips, you can plant in April. All direct seed. Over in this bed, we have beets, can be direct sown. Celery, slow grower, best to be put in as a transplant, but you can try some celery seeds in there. There are so many cool weather crops and people sometimes worry they miss the window. When you plant these in March, they germinate and grow slower here in Maryland. When you plant them in April, they germinate quickly and grow a little bit faster. So you're not necessarily behind. Just because you saw me plant a lot of this stuff four weeks ago doesn't mean you can't get it into the ground now. And I'm talking about, you know, direct seeding. Bib lettuce, more peas, cool weather crops. Put them in in April. Swiss chard. This is last year's, but you can direct seed that, put it in. I've already talked about it. Mustard greens, direct seed. Kale, you could direct seed. You can buy your onion bunches, your onion sets, get them into the ground. Endive is a wonderful green that is underrated. It is just starting to get nice and green. The root systems have set up. This is gonna take off. It's one of my favorite greens to grow, and that's endive. You can direct seed that now. Arugula, this is arugula that overwintered, again, second year it's budding it's flowering you can eat all that but you can direct seed arugula for sure in this area mustard greens these went in on three four then the mustard greens you saw that were big and the red ones they were transplants so that's the difference a transplant's going to be bigger of course grow a little bit more quickly but about a month ago i put in the mustard greens you can do that now they grow really fast and again the seeds that you put in now say on April 6th, they're not going to be five weeks behind. They're going to sprout much more quickly and they will pretty much catch up to these eventually. We have some beets in here. I don't see them coming up. Maybe that's a beet. Oh, there they are. Those are the beets. They take a while. They're great to get in now. And I've seeded some onions in here. You can see the onions are popping up right in there too. Onions you can direct seed too. Perfect to do in April. Those onions are to get to full size, like the size of a baseball. You also have bunching onions, which I put into here, which, you know, get like, they don't get the nice baseball size onion. You know, they'll get an onion that looks more like your thumb. The bunching onions went in there. That's a straight garlic. I'll be putting cucumber plants in here. For the trellising ideas, you know, I want to just show you the cattle panel arch. I show this a lot. You do need a truck to get this home. A lot of places don't deliver it. I get mine at Tractor Supply, and I believe they're 16 feet in length, four feet wide. You can just put them in an arch with a four foot space here, 
some U posts to support them. They're going to want to spring out. I put U posts on both sides. And then I just have this beautiful arch that I grow cucumbers up. The cucumbers will be going in there. Zucchini will be going in there. And I'm kind of practicing not over planting because I have all those plants in the greenhouse, but I don't need like 40 lettuce plants. So I'm saving the space until my warm crops are ready. Put in some purple broccoli, standard green broccoli right in there. This is another cattle panel arch going a different way from end to end of, I believe this is a six foot, maybe eight foot raised bed. But it creates a nice arch here. I will put shade cloth on there, protect the brassicas that are coming up from the heat so that I get a nice crown of broccoli. So you can use trellising in different ways. Like you can put your shade cloth on there and then later you can see remains of beans that I grew up there last year. Different kind of hoops made with rebar um, that I can put in shade cloth, that I can put in ag fabric, that I could put in plastic. If I wanted to, I could put some of this chicken wire that you see right there across it, I could trellis up it. But there's a lot of different things that you can use to create trellising and grow vertically. That's made out of the uh, deck railing hinged together. I have videos on that. If you just check, if you go to my channel and just put in um, trellising, you'll find all kinds of different ways to grow vertically. One by one posts with that masonry mesh just weaved right through it. You can grow cucumbers up this, you can grow beans up this. It's really, really secure. And you just, you know, you need to hammer this in a good two feet deep so that the stake doesn't fall out. This is great for pumpkins and melons that are bigger because it's got these nice thick rails going across and it's going to support bigger plants. Cattle panel, can, you can grow anything up a cattle panel. It's strong enough for that. It'd be hard to grow peas up this because they have little tendrils that aren't going to wrap around the thick pieces that are going you know, along, the board, along the boards right there. You need something like the size of chicken wire for peas because they have thin tendrils or the cattle panel. Coming over here, these are the cheap versions of tomato cages. They don't really support a tomato plant. I mean, they're too, too wimpy. I use these to support my pepper plants that I grow in here. These are actually Brussels that I'm growing on the ends. These would be great for peas, um, even bush beans. Bush beans do flop over even though they're closer to the ground. I like using wire. This is wire that's used to set up electrical fences, galvanized. You can get it at Tractor Supply. It's really inexpensive. It's a little bit stretched now. I weave my asparagus that comes up through here. But you could do a tomato weave with this. You could, you know, build something taller and just grow vines up it. And it's not going to decay. If you use like jute or cotton fabric string or twine, you got to keep replacing it. By using the galvanized metal, it's going to be there for a long time. And this was you know, set up to be loose because I weave my asparagus as it comes up through here. But you could tighten this up, put in a third post, and you just build a really nice fence that's going to stay up for years and years and years. These are T-posts. They're a little bit more expensive. These are eight-foot T-posts. They were like six or eight dollars when I bought them. But wooden ones can cost you four dollars and then they eventually decay. These will be here for 10 years, 15 years, forever. I grow my tomatoes up these. They work really well for supporting indeterminate tomatoes. Again, at eight feet, I still get them a good foot, two feet into the ground, and I can grow a six foot tomato plant up there. These are basic A-frames. They open up and close. You can grow stuff up and down, up and down. You can put a several of them together. Cantaloupe would grow well on here. These are going to support anything. You could weave squash or zucchini on there if you have the vining type. You know, grow all kinds of different things up these. Now, where I got them, it was just a local hardware store and there was no specific brand on it. So I can't give you the name of that. Let's come over here. I want to show you something cool too. Because as we're talking about, you know, what you can direct seed now. Here's some more radishes in there. You can do pak choy, you can do cabbage, you can do collards and kale. They should grow okay because they'll grow through the summer. At this point in Maryland, if you're going to put in uh, cauliflower or broccoli, you really want to do transplants. Strawberry bed. 
See if you can guess what these are. Not strawberries. Those are sunflowers that survive the frost. Sunflowers can take a frost when they're first breaking the ground like this. These are seeds, you can see some right down there, that came from the sunflowers right over there that I grew back there. So the seeds fall, they sit over winter, nature knows what to do, they break the surface, they're stronger, they can take a light frost, they're establishing, and they're gonna grow slowly over April because it's cold, maybe get a little bit damaged because of the frost, but these leaves are gonna be super tough, and then as soon as it warms, they're gonna take off. So I'm gonna be leaving a lot of the sunflowers in here, and I'm gonna let them grow up through this cattle panel for support. I'll have strawberries down at the bottom, sunflowers coming up, and then probably some cucumbers coming up the side. So this place is kind of being designed with nature's hand, and I think it's really cool. Beans will do the same thing. They're not up yet, they take a little bit longer, but a couple beans will be popping up in here too, doing the same exact thing. So technically, you could seed your sunflowers right now. Don't be surprised if they don't come up right away and you're gonna wait three or four weeks. If you seed these like in May or June, they pop up in like six days. You could put in your beans right now. Not all of them, do an experiment. Maybe put some beans like along there. Just let them go, make sure you mark them. They're gonna take longer to germinate because the ground is cold, but when they come up and they take off when those temperatures are right, they're gonna be amazing plants. These are my vertical towers from Greenstalk Gardens. Did a video on setting this guy up. They're looking good, they're establishing. And I think maybe for the point of this video is you don't have to do transplants. You don't have to buy transplants. You don't have to spend six or eight weeks necessarily transplanting, growing stuff indoors to grow your transplants. You can do a lot of direct seeding. It can save you some time and free up space under your grow lights for other things that you may need to grow as transplants like peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, maybe some of your brassicas. Strawberries are doing beautifully. They're starting to flower. Fruit's gonna be starting to form and you can find these towers in the video description too. Thanks so much for watching. I just wanted to give you a quick look at what's going on. Well, not so quick of a look, but it was a longer tour. But just give you some ideas of what you can use for trellising. This is a double panel of cattle panel. Makes a beautiful tunnel. Create trellising, grow vertically, have some fun with it. Really changes how your garden looks. The part of my style for gardening is I like to walk through here, um, just observe things, so I like to have different structures around. Again, thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Check out the video description for more videos and some of the items that you saw in today's tour. Thanks for watching.